In the old days of computers, when you talked about mass storage devices, you really meant mass storage devices. This 40-inch hard disk drive held about 10 megabytes. On this week's Computer Chronicles, we'll be looking at the newest in mass storage devices. Please join us. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by a grant from AFIPS, the American Federation of Information Processing Societies. AFIPS, sponsors of OAC 86, the nation's leading conference on business technology. For conference information, call 800-OAC-1986. Exploring today's business solutions. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover the latest in microcomputer technology worldwide. Byte, the international standard. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, we're talking about hard disk drives today, and what I have here are RAM cards. This is another way to get some mass storage. This is AST's 6-pack plus. You can get about 380K on this particular board. This is Intel's new above board. You can get up to 2 megs storage on that board. It seems there are so many alternatives around to hard disk drives, it suggests that there are still problems with hard disk drives. <laughs> well, I think the RAM card and the hard disk uh, those, two, those are two different phenomena. And uh, the RAM card is really an attempt to expand out that limited amount of memory we have in a 16-bit machine. And I think they'll tend to go away as we go to 32-bit machines where the address space is really mm -hmm. unconstrained. Now, hard disks, of course, we have the problems of the mechanical devices, uh, it's bearings, uh, head crashes, things of that sort. So we have to be very careful to make sure the data is backed up properly and can be restored when those crashes do occur because you'll start to hear the bearings <laughs> whirl and you know, all sorts of problems with them. So the problems with mechanical devices are still there. We're going to take a look at hard disk drives today, and we'll take a look at some of the alternatives, like the Bernoulli box, like tape streamers for backup. We'll begin by looking at an incredible new device that's a hard disk on a card, and it's called the Hard Card. Once limited to mainframe monsters, the hard disk has become a desirable addition for PC owners. Early disk platters shrank to 12. Five and a quarter, and now three and a half inches in diameter, small enough to fit completely on a single PC board. It's the first hard disk drive subsystem that's been designed to be installed and used by the end, by the end user. Uh, by that I mean up until now, disk drives have been manufactured for the systems manufacturers who then go through a technical installation to put that subsystem into their system. With hard card, uh, anyone who uses a PC can install it in about 10 minutes, uh, so it's very easy to install. Um, other major benefit is it's extremely reliable product. Because we have designed uh, both the electronics and the mechanical portion of the hard disk together, we're able to greatly reduce the parts count. As a result, uh, we've been able to reduce the size of hard card to, uh, to a single IBM expansion slot. Sluggish sales of personal computers have led to business failures and pessimistic predictions. But vendors of add-on peripherals, like the hard card, see the slowdown as an opportunity. Corporations uh, in 1985 in particular uh, are not buying PCs in the quantities in which they used to. And the reason is that they've bought millions of them in the last three years. And uh, they've greatly uh, broadened the use of those PCs among their employees. And today they're focusing on how do they improve the productivity of that investment that they've already made. And so in that respect, hard card is a natural. Paradoxically, as computer parts become smaller, users have come to expect concurrently better performance and cheaper prices. But the trend toward smaller formats doesn't always exclude multiple standards. Uh, I think there'll be multiple standards, as has been the history uh, with Winchester disk drives. There are still many Winchester disk drives that have 14-inch uh, media, have 8-inch media, and they constantly increase the performance and capacity of those disk drives. Five and a quarter inch in recent years has, has become uh, 100 megabyte, 200 megabyte drives that have been announced and, and some of them being shipped. Um, three and a half inch is the most recent form factor, uh, the size of the disk. And uh, I think capacities will over time increase on the three and a half inch disk as well. 
Uh, maybe the next question is, will there be a, a sub three inch disc? And uh, I don't know the answer to that. If there are real benefits, then I can guarantee there will be some. Joining us now in the studio are Joel Kammerman. Joel is the CEO of Kammerman Labs of Beaverton, Oregon. And next to Joel is Alan Ebright, the manager for systems development at Priam Corporation of San Jose. Gary? Stuart, it seems like any serious PC user now has a hard disk. And unfortunately, the technology has been improving. The price has been going down. So, Alan, could you tell us a little bit about the technology? Well, the current technology in hard disks is that in the IBM PC XT, 10 megabyte hard disks are being shipped standard. Mm -hmm. In the IBM AT, the higher performance computer, 20 megabytes are standard, disks are standard, and 30 megabyte disks are available. Also, there are add-in disks, other disks that can be placed actually within the CPU of the uh, IBM PC XT or AT. Okay, now this, this particular disk, I guess, is a Cadillac of the line sort of. This is the higher <laughs> end, higher performance, higher capacity disk. Mm -hmm. This is a 60 megabyte unit formatted user data. We've taken the cover off of this unit, which has ruined the unit. Um, these units are generally assembled in clean room facilities, and once you've taken the cover off, dust and dirt will so, get so into the a unit. A warning to our it. viewers not to do what you're about <laughs> right. to do. We've done this so they off. won't have to. Okay. The disc is an electromechanical device that's composed of the actual disc platters themselves. There's four in this unit. These are the platters. They're mounted on a hub, which is turned by a motor. Head assembly. This is the actual read-write head, which is moved on an arm across the surface of the disc to access the information on the disc. This arm is moved by a small motor, in this case, a rotary voice coil motor, which is here. In addition, there's a filter on this unit, this black element over here, which, as the disc is turning, it pumps air through the HDA, the head disc assembly, mm -hmm. and filters the air to make sure that the thing maintains a clean environment. Now, we hear about the, uh, this idea of the air flowing through there and, and the head floating over a surface of the, uh, a surface by the air that's pumped through there. How does that actually operate? Well, it's a very critical part of the Winchester disc operation. Mm -hmm. What actually happens is that as the discs are turned, they pull air along with them in the cavity, mm -hmm. and this air is forced in between the head and the disc surface, and it builds a, an air bearing such that the head to disc distance is very carefully, very uh, closely Okay, controlled. and that's what's known as the head crash, I guess, is when that, <laughs> that control isn't there. Right? When that control isn't there. <laughs> okay. uh, Alan, that's what everybody is concerned about with hard disks. They were, we're told they're very delicate, fragile things, and you mustn't bang them and so on. How delicate is it? Well, hard disks are delicate instruments from the standpoint that it's a precision electromechanical instrument, and they should be treated with care. But you would also treat your computer with care. I mean, you wouldn't drop your, your CRT or you wouldn't care to drop your system unit. This disc and many other discs have shock mounts on it, which help to minimize the problem of, of shock to the unit. The unit's mounted here, and the shock mounts will absorb some of the uh, impact of a... Of a uh, just a jar of some sort. Jar of some this, sort. Is a, this is an internally mounted unit. Uh, uh, Joel, you have, a, a, I guess, an add-on box now. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, this is a Master Flight 6060. Mm -hmm. Contained within it is our two 30-megabyte hard disk subsystems, a 60-megabyte tape backup system. We also have built-in power direction to control access to all your peripherals, a lock and key to control access to your hard disks. We have a surge protector and a built-in filter to control uh, unwanted spikes or noise. You just cable this back in the back end of your PC and you're ready to go. Everything plugs conveniently into the Now, one of the, this tape cartridge backup, this is again an issue that people talk about. I would back up my files, especially when they're, they're 20, 30 <laughs> megabytes. And uh, How long does it take you to back up uh, this particular system? Uh, to back up 10 megabytes on our system takes about two and a half minutes in a file by file mode. Mm -hmm. So, okay. if you, and this is a 60 megabyte system, so you'd multiply by six. Six yeah. to have to do all, <laughs> which is about 15 minutes or okay. so. Now, what is it, in, in, in terms of the uh, from a consumer standpoint, uh, an internally mounted drive versus an uh, externally mounted uh, subsystem, what is the price difference, just to give a comparison? Internal subsystems range from about $399 all the way up to mm -hmm. about 6000 for the external subsystems. Okay. Alan, what, what kind of user needs that amount of capacity? I mean, you, you're talking about 60 megabytes or 60 megabytes here. You said the AT comes with a 20 megabyte drive. But when, do you, when, when should the consumer start thinking about needing this amount of storage? Well, the most common application for high-end, high-performance disk drives is in high-end computers. So more likely a user who's using an IBM AT.